Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Winter here, and if you're new, welcome to my channel. We welcome you. Um, so today I was sitting at work because I had off period and I'm all caught up with my planning. And so I was just sitting and thinking, I was like, where was I last year at this time? Because I'm still in shock that I'm in South Korea just living my life. But um, yeah, as I was thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, this was the, one of the like horrible times of my life because I was researching for um, like information about Epic and just trying to get all these information together and a lot of the th my questions were not answered on like social media or anything like YouTube and uh, blogs and stuff like that because I came here with my husband um, and we didn't apply together he's my dependent so I had lots of questions so today I've decided that I'm going to make a timeline epic timeline uh, video so this will probably be part one and I'm planning on doing a lot more because there's so much information to be given out and I wouldn't want anyone to go through what I want and not have enough information. So yes, you're welcome. But anyway, um, before we start this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and please click on that bell button because when part 2 or 3 and 4 and 5 comes out, I want you to watch it because it's important info. So anyway, let's get started. I have a little note right here with detailed information. It's a lot of dates, so if you really want dates, like write them down, take a note, and all that stuff, okay? So let's get started. So first of all, I would obviously advise you to really look into the Epic website. Um, I'm going to put it down below. Um, and yes like read it thoroughly because there might be some things up there that are like deal breakers that might not like suit you well um, <clears throat> because I mean after all you're moving to a whole new country um, and living there for a full year so yeah really look into it so first thing I'm gonna talk about requirements for um, to be qualified to apply for EPIC so do you have your bachelor's degree or will you have it by the time you apply? Um, it doesn't have to be in English or teaching. It could be um, anything as long as it's a bachelor's degree. I don't think associates will do. You'd need a bachelor's degree. So if you have that, check that because um, that's like the main thing. After that, you would need a certification, uh, which is TESOL and TEFL. I know there are more, I just don't know what they're called. Um, with that, with certification, be sure um, to check how many hours you need for the place you want to apply. So if you're just applying anywhere in South Korea, then you're good. But if you have a specific place that you would like to apply, like Busan, I know, asks for more hours than other places on your certification. So uh, please be sure to check that. Um, and get the right amount of hours you need on your certification. I didn't have to worry about that because I majored in English and Intercultural Studies and my degree came with a certification and it didn't necessarily have like hours which I will mention later. So another thing of course uh, wherever country you're from make sure you have valid documentation like passport and things like that and you're able to travel out of the country and live somewhere else for a year or more. So just check on that. Uh, make sure you have you know, a new passport that's not going to expire within like the six months or so. Um, with that being said actually, so if you um, are like me and you were born in a different country um, and you went to the United States, uh, just check on that because I know that your you your requirements for um, like English schooling is starting seventh grade. So you would have to be in like, schooled like in complete English 
since you're in seventh grade. So if you move to the U.S. like after the seventh grade, then I don't think you're qualified. There might be an exception, you'd have to talk to them. But I know that it needs to be starting seventh grade, so I moved to the United States when I was 11, seventh grade. So it was perfect for me, which was crazy. Um, I would really be upset if I have all the requirements, but I couldn't work because I didn't go to school starting seventh grade. But anyway, um, just check on that. Um, okay, so number two is that, um, well, school in Korea starts in March. It doesn't start in September like ours, or in Florida they start in August, I think. But yeah, it's not the same. Um, school here starts March 1st, I want to say, but the beginning of March. And so there's two intakes for Epic, one spring and one's fall. Um, I applied for spring, so the application for spring opened uh, August 1st, and the application for fall opens February 1st. So I don't know much about this, the fall, but I can, I'm can. i going to obviously talk from my perspective, um, which I started in spring. Um, so I started working on my application I literally as soon as it opened. It opened August 1st, and... I downloaded it that same day, I believe. Um, prior to that, like five, six months before that, um, I was just doing research on like just every single thing. All the information I could gather, I was gathering because I really wanted to make sure I was making the right move. You know, it's moving to a whole new country. Anyway, so um, I started working on my application as soon as it opened, August 1st. Everything seemed pretty easy. Um, so the application has 11 pages, and the six pages out of the 11 were just personal, not personal questions, but they were questions about you. So you, that's easy one. You should know yourself more than anyone, right? Like just putting in your social security number, like your name, your full legal name, last name, all that stuff. Um, that was six pages, um, and then page seven and eight were a uh, personal essay and when I say personal essay there were a few questions and you pretty much have to answer them in short like short essay kind of thing so if you put all the answers together it would probably come up to like two page essay but they put it in a way that they ask you a question and you answer in a small little essay and then you do that multiple times um, and then page 9, 10, and 11 were lesson planning. I think they provide you with the outline and you just have to fill it in. Um, I don't, I kind of went blank on that, I don't remember. But also because I had a time, the timeline from my schooling, so I don't know if I used my own or the one provided by them. But anyway, I did my lesson planning on colors. And I did it, what was that? Um, I did it with the thought of like me teaching elementary school. I had no idea that I would be placed in middle school, let me tell you. I'm glad I, I got placed in middle school, but I don't know why. With like everything in my mind, my heart was telling me that I was going to do elementary because I don't know, I felt more confident with elementary and, um, but no, I, I did hear that if you actually major in, like, English or intercultural studies or teaching or something like that, you're more likely to get in middle school. I don't know if that's the truth. Don't quote me on that. So, yes, I did my lesson planning on colors for, to, uh, elementary school and, um, yeah, it was simple. It just was time consuming. So... Here's where the dates come. So I turned in my application on September 14th. Yes, I know I started working on it like August 1st. And no, it didn't take me all the way until September 14th to just like complete it. Um, I was just busy with other things. Like I was planning my wedding. So that was like a huge time consuming thing that I was doing at the same time. 
So I wasn't, I didn't turn it in as fast as other people had. Um, yeah, so I turned it in on September 14th. Um, I got a respond on September 14th saying that um, we received it, but they're like, give us some time because I guess, I don't know. Because they're pretty much just saying that, like, uh, give us some time to wrap up the, like, semester or the people, teachers that were already there. Um, like, I don't know what they were wrapping up, but it was just, that was what the email said. Give us some time to, you know, wrap up whatever we're doing right now and we'll get back to you. And I was like, okay. And so that was September 14th. Um, and then I got an email on September 21st, um, and it was like, you passed your first um, step, and we would want to schedule an interview. So I was like, whoa, that, like, I thought that was fast, because, I don't know, I just expected a lot more time, because from everything that I was watching, it said that it took a lot of time, but here's my thing. It's not the same for everyone, so these might not be the same with yours, but it, like it will align and be around the same time. Especially if you apply like the same date as me, then it will probably be around the same time. Um, so I got that email on September 21st, and then October 4th at 1.35 a.m. was when my interview was scheduled okay so no I don't I didn't want to um, schedule it for 1 35 in the morning but because it's almost like first come first serve so if you apply first you're more likely to get the um, interview slots like a lot earlier um, to whatever like of your choice I guess like whatever dates that you want and um, you're probably more likely to get the location that you want, like you applied for as well. Because I know that the main cities like Seoul and Busan fill up quick, and if you can't get into that, then they're probably going to put you in your um, second or third option. Um, so, yes. So, I had my interview October 4th. 1:35 a.m. Mind you, I got married October 6th, and my bridesmaids were there, and I was literally getting ready to get married, while I was also thinking about interviewing, which was crazy. Now that I think about it, um, yeah, I actually have my first video um, includes like all the reaction and excitement and all that stuff. So if you want that. I'm going, if you want to watch that, I will uh, link it below. Um, yeah, so this is just dates, but that one tells you exactly how I reacted and all that stuff. So anyway, um, on the interview, um, it was, like, that's when you get to meet your recruiter, and he pretty much just interviewed with me, and he first asked me a few questions, and um, not like personal questions, but just about me. Uh, got to know me a little more and then after that we went through my application like my entire application He had it. I have it. I had it and we went through it and um, Yeah, it was he gave me feedbacks. He told me like to change a few things um, There were like so if you're not completely sure and like some of the things that it's asking you on your application um, Don't worry because when you have your interview your recruiter will tell you like, hey, like, um, you need to adjust this, or they're gonna ask you questions, and then when you clarify, they're gonna be like, oh, then this is what you need to do, and things like that. So I know that I needed to fix some things about my um, husband because uh, we were going together, but we hadn't applied together. He didn't apply at all. He was my dependent, so there were more uh, detailed information I needed. Um, so yes. If you, like, also, if, honestly, if you're going with a husband or wife, please don't think that you can't do it. Like, it's so possible. And, um, yeah, just you can email me, message me, whatever. I'll give you all the deets you need to bring your boo thing over here, okay? 
Um, and also, like, once you're here, if, you know, you need, like, a job or something for your spouse, um, because you don't want them to just sit around, um, and as a dependent, they can't really get a job here in Korea with the F3 visa. So, yes, if you have questions on that, just let a girl know. Let me know. Yes, so, moving on, um... Yeah, so he helped me out a lot. I um, took his advice. I pretty much updated everything and like fixed everything that he asked me to. Um, so October 10th, okay. So October 4th was my interview. October 10th when was when I got the email that said I passed my interview. Um, and so I got married the 6th. The tenth, I was in my honeymoon. Let me tell you all, it was like double excitement. Again, I made a whole excitement thing about it, a video about the excitement. So go ahead and watch that. So yes, and then um, I got the email October tenth. He said that you passed your interview, yay! Um, and then he sent me more forms to fill out, yay! So um. The forms that he sent me, I was supposed to, like, you're supposed to fill them out and mail it to them. So, <clears throat> I forgot to say that you also need a letter of recommendation, two letters of recommendation. The letter of recommendation had to be uh, signed by ink. So, when I got my letter of recommendation, one of them was from my professor and she signed it and faxed it to me, but uh, that was one of the things that I had to fix was that I had to actually go to the college, um, which wasn't that far, but I had to like get her to print it and then sign it uh, by ink. So make sure you have that. So yes, so I didn't come back home until from like our honeymoon and all that stuff until October 15th. And so I started working on all the documents on October 15th. That's when like I got them all like printed out and all that stuff I needed to do. Um, and I finished all that on the end of October, beginning of November. Um, I know that took a lot of time, but um, here are some things that you need to do. Um, you need to like, you need your diploma you need to send them your diploma, but you need to get that apostle, you need to get that notarized, um, you need to get like a background check, uh, but they don't want it just like, uh, I don't know, they don't want it just normal one, they want it like, I guess at a higher level. And um, they, they need like pictures and all that stuff. But anyway, um, Yes, so this requires a lot of money. Honestly, apostling and getting notar things notarized, they, they cost money. So, good thing you're looking at this video right now because it gives you some time to save up money. You also need to pay your your um, plane ticket because they don't, like, give you the money in advance for your plane ticket. They give it to you when you, later on, when you come, when you're actually, like, start working here. So... Yeah, keep in mind, like, you need to save enough money. Um, so, yes, I mailed it all in um, the end of October, beginning of November. And November 19th, I got an email saying that we received everything, but you don't have a specific number stated on your certification, your TESOL certification. Mind you, I went to school for that specific major. Like, I went to school English and Intercultural Studies, like I said earlier, and I actually took multiple, like, semesters um, for my certification. Like, I took classes, just different classes, you know? So it doesn't state the, t uh, the exact hours. So I had to go to the... Um, college that I went to and I was like, hey, like, is there any way you guys can give me a written letter that specified like how many hours I did? So they had to add it up and it was like, 
way over what was required, but they needed that in, in writing. So um, I got this email the 19th. I, you better believe Homegirl was at the school the 20th. The next day, I didn't even think I went to work. I just went straight to um, the school and got that fixed. And we mailed it. And right away, I got a response saying that, like, yeah, we got it and I fixed it. Like, you're all good. Just wait. So, November 19th, or November 20th, was that email sent to me. And so, November 20th, um, December and the beginning of January, like I didn't hear anything and that was the worst. I hated it. I hate waiting, like not knowing because I'm sure a lot of you guys will experience this. I know that some of my friends had experienced that. Um, you're just like, you don't know what you're doing in their life at that time because you're literally like, so am I going to South Korea or am I staying here? Should I tell my job? Should I tell my family like who do, what do I do and you you don't want to tell people and you don't get accepted and then you look like a loser so that's the worst part of this whole thing like that waiting time was the worst for me I know that it was the worst for a lot of people because it just holds you back you really can't do much so anyway but that good news came on January 7th I got that official letter um, email uh, saying that um, congratulations you have secured a position in Busan which is the place I wanted to go to which is the one that requires more hours for their um, for your TESOL certification so yeah I was surprised because I know I wasn't like the fastest on like mailing in all the documentations and all that stuff but I still got like it's the second largest city so I still got a big city which is what I wanted um and so yeah it was great um yeah but they just tell you on the 7th of January when they told me congratulations that's all they told me they didn't tell me like hey you're gonna be teaching two middle schools uh, they didn't say um, like you're gonna be in like Nampo district like yeah, they don't tell you their district they don't tell you that they don't even tell you oh your orientation where like your orientation will be in this place so come to the nearest airport like they didn't say anything until January 10th or 11th I'm not sure one of those two days um, they they like sent us like a kind of like a, I don't it's like a little chart and it said like uh, what day they're picking us up from what airport so that's how we knew where to fly to because before that you have no idea so then yeah once we found that out um, we're like okay great now we know where we're flying to um, so we start looking up plane tickets because once you get your official email or letter saying that you made it, um, then you only have to worry about your visa and your uh, plane ticket, really. Or unless there were some documentation pending, like there are some people that had to still work or fix some documentation after they got accepted um, or they didn't have their certificate or something like that. Um, but for me, I, I only had to worry about my visa and my... Uh, plane ticket, but on the 10th or the 11th, as soon as they send me the location, I got that plane ticket. My husband and I quickly grabbed those um, tickets. It wasn't that expensive. It was one way, so it was like, whatever. Um, we decided to get our plane tickets a day earlier, like, to arrive there a day earlier, because Epic didn't pick us up from the airport until the 19th of February, but we arrived there the 18th of February just to like get our lives together, you know, just get it together. Um, so we stayed at a hotel near the airport and yeah. So on the 18th, um, let's see, what else am I forgetting? Yeah, they, um, the app, oh yes, actually you have to wait for a contract to get your visa because like epic has to sponsor your visa they have to say yes she's working with us you can give her a visa for a whole year you know so 
you can't really just get a visa for a whole year without a contract. So you pretty much just wait for your contract to come, which didn't take okay. that long. So you'll get your um, contract, and as soon as you get your contract, then you um, should already have filled out your uh, visa form, um, and like it will tell you like E2 is for teachers. Um, and then for my husband was F3 because the F3 is a dependent. Um, so yeah, all that information will be there for you. You literally just fill it out and wait for your contract. As soon as you have your contract, you put your passport and your contract and all that stuff that you're, you are told to print out and all that stuff. And you mail it to the nearest embassy. Mm, some people prefer to like go there personally. Um, but I mailed mine in and nothing happened. They did call me for like a question because they almost gave my husband an E2 visa. Like they didn't realize that he's a dependent and like, you know, they just do things quick so they would make mistakes, but they called me thankfully um, and got that fixed. Um, so yes, finally the you just wait for your contract once you get all that stuff. So then honestly after that, you just wait. You wait for your visa to come, which is not bad. But the crazy thing though is once you um, were told the 7th of January that you got accepted, we literally left February. <laughs> okay, so my battery died. Um, sorry about that. But yeah, I've honestly talked enough anyway, so yeah, that's all I have to say as far as timeline. Um, and if you have any questions or there's some things that I didn't um, cover, I would love to cover um, it, like a comment or uh, DM me, email me, or any of that, um, and I will be sure to help you. I'm here to help you guys so you could succeed. Um, but yeah, and that's all for today. Uh, like I said, I'm going to make part two, part three, maybe part four, I don't know. I'm going to talk about different um, topics in the Epic um, application and all that stuff. So please um, subscribe um, and get all the info you need. Hey. Yeah. 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 Yeah.